What's going on people, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another match review. It's Chelsea 1, Manchester City 3. And yeah, the more things change, the more they stay the same. It's a new year and it is exactly the same Chelsea, it's the same tactics, same style of play. Same brain dead lack of imagination in the final third, same everything you've expected to see from Chelsea over the last few weeks. It was absolutely jarring. And the worst part is, we came into this game in a good mood. The lineup had us a bit gassed. We had Hakim Ziyech return back to the Stein lineup. We had Timo Werner playing up front for the first time in ages. And things looked positive. We were thinking, finally, we're seeing the players play in the position that we want to see. We're seeing Ziyech, Werner, and Cut. No, Ziyech, Werner, and Christian Pulisic playing up front together for the first time in ages. All the thoughts going in your head about thinking what sort of creativity you might see from the club today. Creativity where? There was absolutely no creativity. The midfield, all, all they did was pass sideways for 90 minutes. And up front, like, you can have Timo Werner up front all you want. I've said that multiple times. But if all we're going to do is spam crosses into him, he's going to be worse up front than Tammy Abraham is because he has zero aerial threat. Hell, Christian Pulisic is less aerial threat. And that still didn't stop us hoofing the ball up to him about six times in that match. It, it, was, it was completely predictable. This game, we're going to do the player ratings because... I didn't do that in the last game. I wanted to actually sit and think about this one before I just went on a massive rant like I probably would have done yesterday. So today I wanted to go in with a level head and I wanted to take a look at each player's individual performances. Some of the players were poor. Hell, most of the players were poor yesterday. Like I will put hand on heart and say that. But the fact is the system is what let us down the most. Fact is, all we sit there and do is pass sideways and backwards for 90 minutes. I found out this stat and it is absolutely damning. We have only made four through balls the entire season. Bruno Fernandes has made more through balls than our entire club. Mohamed Salah has made more through balls than our entire club. How have we only made four through balls the entire season? And the deepest part is, you look if you look at the stats, it's not even four different players that have done one through ball. We've only had two players that have done two through balls the entire season. I think it's Kai Havertz and Jorginho. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on this. But we're so predictable and that's why we played right into Manchester City's arms. All they did was force us out wide. The exact same thing everybody else does with us because they know in the middle we aren't going to do anything. You could hand us the ball in the midfield. All we will do is pass it out to the side and try and get a cross in. It was absolutely predictable and the worst part is when we play predictable football we don't even play or move or change our tactics to work towards that. It was clear that we needed a focal point but there was no focal point that came on. Like, I won't say too much about the subs because for the most part they worked. Kai Habits and Hudson Doy, two subs that she's linked up for our only goal today. So fair play to Frank Lampard from that. Billy Gilmore though, the right substitution to think of but he wasn't the number one substitution we needed. We clearly needed Olivier Drude in this game and we didn't bring him on. And now it's another three games dropped. We're down to eighth place, potentially down to ninth place as well. The tricky runner games coming up. Granted, it is Fulham next, but we are not going to sit here and underestimate football Fulham, especially with our recent form. Fact is, Fulham got a draw against Liverpool back at their ground and we're going to their ground next. This is the biggest game of the season for them. It's Chelsea at home. This is is the big West London derby and I know we're gonna go there complacent because that's just typical Chelsea if we don't get a win against Fulham and Arsenal go level on points behind us that might have to be it you know I know Frank I know Chelsea are now starting to look at potential new suitors there's rumors that Frank Lampard is falling out with some of the fringe players of the first team squad basically screams Alonso and potentially Tomori but I'm not going to throw any names towards it but Lampard needs to turn things around he needs to turn things around quick I'm not completely Lampard out yet because my biggest issue is the system right now. That is what the biggest problem is. If we can change the system, maybe the results will change. But if we continue to do the same things, game in and game out, what is going to change? I'm only holding hope that if we switch to maybe a 4-2-3-1, if we go back to three at the back, I don't even know. If we start with two strikers up front, just do something different, maybe we will get a different result. But also, same way, if Lampard continues to play the same system for the next few games, that's also going to be damning in itself. And we know what the definition of insanity is. It's doing the same thing again and again and again and again and expecting different results. And what are we doing? We're doing the same thing again and again and we're expecting different results this is insanity football I don't know what we're expecting to get out of this 
I don't know what Lampard's expecting to get out of this, but I'm I'm not gonna waffle too much. We're gonna move on into the player ratings before I really start taking too much of people's time. We will delve a lot more deeper into this in a future live video. There's gonna be plenty of videos popping up on this video on this channel over the next month or two, so check it out. But we're gonna go into the player ratings now. We're gonna start off in goal. Edward Mendy, now not directly involved in any of the three goals if we're really going to think about it. The first goal, everyone's going to say he should have got a hand to it. It was a good finish by Gundogan to be honest. The more you look at it, it was a great turn to beat Thiago Silva and an even better finish in the bottom right hand corner. Could he have got a better hand to it? It all depends on how harsh you want to be on him. But other than that, I don't think he did too much. Second goal... Near post as well, but it was a really strong finish from from Phil Foden and he just got beaten for pace. Not going to take too much out of him for that either. If anything, someone could have marked him a lot quicker. A lot of people say Thiago Silva. I wouldn't blame Thiago Silva for that either as well. I'm looking more towards Azpilicueta, Kante or Mason Mount. Someone should have picked him up while Thiago Silva was trying to deal with the earlier through ball to Phil Foden as well. Ha, through, through ball, another thing we can't do, but we move. Other than that, second half, couple good saves from Edward Mendy to keep the scoreline decent. I didn't think he was one of our worst players, so I'm going to give him a five. As for Equator, uh, this was his 400th game as well. He struggled. City overloaded the wide areas so much that game, and he just couldn't handle it. He was getting bypassed by Phil Foden for fun on multiple occasions, and he looked out of it. He looked so out of it today. We definitely miss Rhys James. There's a reason why I call him the best right back in the league, and he, there's a reason why he's potentially one of our players this season as well. He was ex He would have been excellent in this game. But at the very least, he would have handled the pressure a little bit more than Azpilicueta did, so I'm going to give Azpilicueta a three. Uh, moving on to Thiago Silva, I think he was probably our best defender today. People are going to try and scapegoat him for one of the first two goals. I don't think either of them were his fault. The first one, it was a good turn by Gundogan. Like, fact, that is straight facts. Like, are you going to sit here and blame him for getting done by a good move by a good player? No, he just got turned. It is what it is. You've got to move on with that and take it on the chin. Second goal. People are going to say, why didn't he mark Phil Foden? Bro, he was already on the floor stopping a through ball to Foden in the first place. Somebody else should have picked him up. That's why we look so clueless in transitions. But again, that's a system failure. That's got nothing to do with Thiago Silva. Other than that, I thought he was one of our better players today. He was one of the more composed players in our squad. Couldn't have done much with the shower of shite around him. But it wasn't his fault. So I'm going to give him a 5. Kurt Zuma, like I'm talking about the shower of shite around and this is exactly what I meant. He absolutely struggled in Manchester City's attack today. Botched clearance to lead to the second goal to begin with anyway and he just got absolutely bypassed by De Bruyne, Gundogan, um, who else? Sterling and Bernardo Silva. He absolutely struggled today. I'm going to give him a free. Ben Chilwell. He was also terrorised on the wings, I can't lie, but at the very least he had the legs and the stamina to get back. Azpilicueta completely struggled, but Ben Chilwell, to an extent, was able to hold his own. So I'm going to give him a... I'll, I'll give him a four, I'll give him a four, he wasn't too bad. Moving on into the midfield, and to be honest, I could just skip the midfield in general because they all didn't show up today. N'Golo Kante. One of his worst performances in a Chelsea shirt today. He absolutely struggled with the Manchester City press. Also, I do want to say, all of you men who are slating me about N'Golo Kante in the lone DM role, this is low-key what I was worried about. I'm not going to say too much about it because the whole midfield struggled today. And I'm not just going to scapegoat N'Golo Kante for this. But I've always said I was worried about his passing ability against a good pressing side. And he struggled. Leeds United, to be fair, they are a good pressing side. But they aren't the finished article. Not by a long shot. So we can give the benefit of the doubt to this one. I always said the Man City game was going to be something I was worried about. Look what happened today. He absolutely struggled. Rash fouls all game. People are going to escape going for the third goal as well. That's just an entire team stupidity. That was clownery in itself. How you leave N'Golo Kante as the only player behind for a set piece, not thinking Manchester City are going to counter us like they haven't spent the entire fucking first half doing it, I will never understand. But N'Golo Kante, we are not leaving him out to dry, even though, to be honest, he was terrible. It was rash fouls all game. Struggled transitioning the ball from defence into attack. 
passing ability wasn't there. It, it was a terrible performance from him. So I am going to give him a three. Not completely his fault, but he was still completely poor today. It was one of his worst performances in a Chelsea shirt. So I'm going to give him a three. Mateo Kovacic definition of a passenger today zero creativity zero forward passes just head down dribbling sideways passes tackles and vibes he's getting a free mason mount tried to press manchester city worked hard i guess we know what you can do off the ball i'm not going to speak too much about it because i'm not going to yak on about work rate when we've lost 3-1 awful crosses today anyway still no creative impact Slightly the best midfielder, best midfielder out of the three, but I mean it's the best of a bad bunch, so he's just gonna get a four. Timo Werner, not too bad today. Everyone's gonna say, oh, he didn't score, he didn't get an assist. Nobody found him all game. The guy was making runs. The guy was dropping deep to get involved in the link-up play because we were not getting the ball forward and we were transitioning absolutely terribly the whole match. But Werner looked better up front. He was making runs. He was getting into space, his movement was decent, but if you're going to cross to him all game, what is the point? I've said that plenty of times, what's the point? The system is what's letting Timo Werner down, he is a system player, you need to play to this guy's strengths, and we consistently fail to do that, and if anything, that's one of Lampard's biggest issues right now, because he is not getting the best out of our new signings. Timo Werner is the biggest example of that. I will give Werner a 5. Only because he gets way too much stick and I'm not scapegoating him in this game again. He did not have a bad performance. We just didn't find the guy. Everyone says finding Timo. It was finding Timo today. Nobody found him. Not his fault today. So I'm going to give him a five. Hakim Ziyech. Lots of touches. Not really much attacking threat. His only real option to cross the ball into was Christian Pulisic all game. And even, I think by half time, he thought that was stupid as well. Because all he started doing was passing into the centre. He obviously wasn't fully fit. He came off after about an hour, 70 minutes into the game. I would have just given him a four and be gone with it. But it was the way he reacted to that third goal for me, which is taking him straight down to a three. Legit walking. And Kevin De Bruyne, who scores the third goal as well, he's not even sprinting back. The guy's jogging forwards on the counter attack. And Hakim Ziyech still isn't marking him. And he's the second furthest player back other than N'Golo Kante. That cannot run. And I'm not accepting that BS. So Hakim Ziyech is getting a three from me. Christian Pulisic really, really tried to carry our attack today. People are going to say he had a poor performance. He just had too much to do. 14 attempted dribbles. And again, when you're crossing the ball to Christian fucking Pulisic, what's the point? Like, it was so easy for the Manchester City attack. I mean, the Manchester City defence. All you have to do is sweep up aerial battles against fucking 5'5 five five Christian Pulisic. What's the point, man? Like, some of the tactics are so baffling, but Pulisic really tried to carry the attack today. He he worked his ass off, and he doesn't deserve the result he had, so I'll get, I'm going to give him a six. Um, moving on to the substitutes, Callum Hudson-Odoi, our best attacker tonight. His close control was amazing, definitely deserved that goal towards the end of the game. I'm not going to say why didn't he start, because I was happy with the lineup. It was the system that messed up for me, but... He has to have more game time or we're losing this kid. He is a very good player. I don't know why we don't start this kid more. Like, Fulham game, this guy has to start. Even if we're going to spam crosses all fucking game, I want to see the guy start. The guy has to get more game time. If, oh, if his only reward for this is a game against Morecambe and then going back on the bench against Fulham, then we need to have talks about Lampard's get man, management, uh, uh, man management as well because that's a known problem in itself. Kai Havertz linked up well with Callum Hudson-Odoi to get the assist. Slowly looking back to his best. I'm going to give him a five. And Billy Gilmore looked all right when he came on. Was going to struggle with the Manchester City midfield anyway. But they dropped back about another 20 yards because they wanted to rest for the cup game in a few days. So he didn't really have much to do anyway. I would have rather that substitute was Olivier Giroud because we were screaming for a focal point all match. If we're going to spam crosses all game and it's clear that it's not working because our only options are Pulisic and Werner. Maybe it was clear to bring Olivier Giroud but no one decided to do that. Let's move on to the manager Frank Lampard. Like I said, I like the lineup initially, so I'm not going to say too much about it. Substitutions as well, not too bad. Got, a, got, got the assist, and the assist maker and the goal scorer were both substitutes, so fair play. Where was Olivier Giroud, though? We needed a focal point. We were playing like there was a focal point up front, so why didn't we add one? I don't understand that. The system as well. Why do we only have a plan A? And why do why does not enough people talk about it? Fact is, Maurizio Sarri was getting absolutely torn to shreds for only having a plan B. I mean, for only having a plan A and no plan B. Look where we are. 
And we haven't got better than we have done last season. We're doing statistically worse than we did last season. Lampard, I love you, man. You are a Chelsea legend. Please, I beg you, fix up. Because all I am asking for is a change of system. I'm not even screaming Frank Lampard out yet. Because I still think we could change things up with a different system if we were less predictable. But the fact is, we are more predictable than a book that you've read ten times back to back. I can tell exactly how we're going to play. Hell, you can even tell half the substitutes at this point. We are so damn predictable, it's not even funny anymore. And how many more games are we going to do the same fucking thing, game after game after game, until what? Until Lampard gets sacked, or until he changes things up? When is he going to change things up? We need to start doing this quicker. If the Fulham game, I see the same tactics, and we don't get a win in this game, that might be it for me. That might really be it for me. But guys, this is the end of player ratings. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, up the channel.